an ever-changing world, Off Hollywood Media presents a voice of truth and inspiration, resonating a vibration of love, laughter, and understanding, illuminating new paths for new directions as we, as one, strive for higher and higher planes of existence, always remembering life. This is radio like you've never felt before, life changes. And now, your host, our MC, the master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for putting on that job. That's like a movie show. A uh, movie show. Movie, movie voice. <laughs> okay. This is going to be a fun show. I can tell. And it is, actually. And partly because we have Christy Marie Sheldon on the show. She's author of Love or Above, The Essential Spiritual Toolkit. So we're going to learn so much about love and above, whatever that means. Why don't we we wait and have her tell us about it? In the meantime, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of interesting. Actually, I, somebody said something to me today, and uh, they said, oh, so that's how you are. And I thought, wait a minute, what do you mean by that? And this whole story came to my mind. I remembered... Several months ago, we were doing a Life Changes live show, and a lady called the uh, office, and she wanted a booth, like the day before the show, and uh, spoke to Dorothy, and Dorothy told her that there were no booths available at that point, and that we had actually been sold out for booths. And she said she wanted to speak to the person in charge of booths, so she... um, uh, Dorothy referred her to Mark Skelton, who was one of our producers at the time, who was also in charge of the booths at our live events. And so she called Mark Skelton and said, I want a booth at your show. And Mark Skelton says, well, we're all sold out. As a matter of fact, we have a waiting list, which was a good problem to have. Actually, the hotel, we had actually asked for more um, tables than, 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 than they were willing to give us, but they did. So Mark told her that she couldn't have a booth. So then she called Dorothy and said she wanted to speak to the top person at Life Changes. And Dorothy said, well, technically, I'm it. And she says, well, then you need to find a way to get me a booth. And Dorothy explained to her that it just wasn't possible. Well, the show happened the next day. And I I, I don't, Dorothy had shared this story with me because it was interesting. She was really uh, being very difficult on the phone and 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 then mark uh had explained the same thing to me about this lady who was being very difficult on the phone and wanting a booth etc cetera, etc cetera. so we were at the event and i was just about to go on stage and this lady came up to me and said it's too hot in here can you get somebody to turn the air conditioning on and i said sure so since i hadn't been introduced yet I found a a hotel employee and they turned the air conditioning on for her. And just before Mark Lejeure introduced me on the stage, she came up to me and said, you know, that music's too loud. I hope um, whoever's going to get up next is not going to be loud too. And I said, did you by any chance do such and such? I I mean, is this your craft? Because she told us what, she told Dorothy why she wanted the table. And she said, yes, how would you know that? And I I just put two and two together. The person who would be the way she was on the phone with Dorothy and with Mark Skelton might be the same kind of person who complained about a lot of things like she did at the live event. And it's interesting that a month or two later, I was at Whole Foods and waiting in line, and there was a lady at the front of the line who was taking up so much time and complaining about, well, no, this is supposed to be here, and no, can you double bag it, and no, can you please do this, can you please do that? And I peeked over to see, just to see what the hang-up was, and it was that lady. And I thought, wow, what are the chances? But how beautiful that this lady reminded me that sometimes we get like this. And and maybe she doesn't have friends good enough or or people that are outside this way of being that can stop and say, hey, do, do you know that you do this? Do you know you're creating this? And I had forgotten all about this story until this weekend. 
uh, about a month or so ago, a lady had bought something and wanted to come by the office and pick it up. And she said, I'll be there tomorrow. And then she called and said, okay, I can't be there tomorrow, but I'll be there the day after, okay? And it's like, okay. And then on that day, she said, I can't come today because this happened and that happened, but I can come next week at this time. Okay, that's fine. And that continued every other day almost for a month. And then finally, she was going to come on Saturday and pick up this thing. So I made myself available to her to pick it up on Saturday. And she called 20 minutes before she was supposed to be here and said, you know, I'm lost. I thought I was supposed to be here. I thought I'm supposed to be there. And I don't know where I'm supposed to be going. I thought it was here. And so I gave her the information. And then she called back and said, you know, I'm not going to be able to make it on time. I'm going to be picking up a friend and there's no parking here. And she went on and on and on. I said, you know, it's okay. And she said, how long are you going to be there? I said, I'll be here an hour. Well, of course, it took her an hour to get here. And when she came up to uh, the door, she started telling me, you know, there was no parking here, and then this happened over there. And the interesting thing is, is I just started to chuckle. Number one, her shirt was on backwards. Now, I wasn't chuckling because her shirt was on backwards, but it just seems that, of course, her shirt would be on backwards. She was all over the place. And I wanted to say to her, do you know you're doing this? Do you know that you cause this? Do you know by you continuing to tell your story of how the reason you can't make it and there was no parking and whatever, and like the lady before who always had something to complain about, had anybody ever stopped them to say, just just stop, just, just breathe? Do you need to go into that pattern? So when somebody who's very close to me today, our business manager, in fact, said to me, oh, that's the way you are. As he's getting to know me, I'm thinking, wait a minute. He is my somebody who is stopping me to tell me this is the way you do things, Filippo. And if it's not a way that's conducive to better business or to a better experience or to a better life, then maybe I can stop and ask him and say, what exactly did you notice? What exactly did you mean by that? And examine how I might be creating the same situations like these other people create. And they were dear, dear ladies. I'm sure they don't want to live like this and have this kind of experience. And I, too, don't want to have the kind of experience I may be having or causing anybody that's near to me if I'm continuing an old pattern that I have not stopped to look at or nobody has stopped me and made me look at it. So I'm offering that up and saying, first of all, I'm very grateful to our business manager who said, so that's the way you are. Well, there are certain things that I would be very proud to say, yes, it is, but that's not one. He wasn't referring to one of those. <laughs> so I'm grateful for these ladies for being mirrors to me. And I hope that someday, somehow, I will be able to stop them and say, can you look at this or do you want to look at this? Or maybe there's something you might want to look at this in this area, just in case they want to change. Because as we know, especially here on Life Changes with Filippo, life does change constantly as a matter of fact. And it's interesting that today we're going to learn about a different kind of change, how to change into love and above. And it'll be interesting to find out what that exactly means. I want to remind everybody that you're listening to Filippo Voltaggio on Life Changes with Filippo, broadcasted here every Monday night on the BBS Radio Network. And to learn more about us, do go to www.lifechanges.ws. And there you can also hear this show live every Monday night or hear all of our archives at the moment for free in, on our archive pages. So with that, I want to tell you about our guest. Again, she's the author of Love or Above, The Essential Spiritual Toolkit and is an intuitive life coach, a workshop leader, and a conscious facilitator. 
who shows people how their personal energetic frequency sabotages their life and determines everything in life that shows up and how to change it. Now, Christy has been a regular feature on several top 10 radio shows, including Coast 103.5 in Los Angeles, KJEE, KOMP, KMKXQ. Uh, those of you who are around the country that know these, these call letters know that these are top radio stations. She's also helped over 10,000 people personally, and that means like one-on-one, -on -one, as well as groups and businesses and including world leaders. So with that, we are very happy, honored, and privileged to have on our show, Christy Marie Sheldon. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Hi, it's a pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and mine as well, and, and all of ours, actually. We've been enjoying you. We got to spend last weekend together. and Yeah, and, got to take in some great energy. <laughs> absolutely, and we got to talk about how to how to take our love and stay there, or better, go above that. Yeah. So why don't we just dig right in, because there's so much to talk about. You talk about something called personal energetic frequency, and you say this is very important. What is it, and why is it important? Well, your personal energetic frequency is basically it determines what shows up in your life, uh, how easily you get along in life, how well you manifest things, um, are you living a life you love? So to me, it's like the most important thing that somebody can have in their life. Um, and what I've, what I've basically used the scale of human consciousness by Dr. David Hawkins. Right. And, uh, you know, he has a scale of consciousness of zero to a thousand, a thousand being enlightened. And um, I'll go through some of the numbers so that we can kind of figure out where we're all at. Okay. <laughs> so a person who's uh, operating generally out of uh, shame, shame, the belief that is attached to shame means I am not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, guilt is at level 30. Shame was at level 20 on the scale of uh, zero to a thousand. Wow. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, if you're going to eat the cookie, don't, like, guilt yourself over eating the cookie. Just eat the cookie. <laughs> or the chocolate cake. <laughs> or the, yeah. Like, <laughs> but you have to get to the place where you can actually love it. Otherwise, you're just actually infusing, you know, a really weird energy in your body, basically. So, so you're saying we can have a cookie and be guilty about it, and that brings our energy really low. Yeah, you've just, you've created a grand misfortune. Like, one of my things is I actually think that the way we ruin a person is actually uh, guilt and shame them. Oh, yeah, and yeah. that happens a lot. Yeah, and, in, in, you know, that's what, how moms, you know what I mean? My mom did the good old guilt shame sometimes. Mm. Or <laughs> families can do that. And they didn't know that necessarily they were doing that. Um, now, how is this measured? Is, is it, you're, you're giving numbers out, but where do these numbers come from? Um, what he did is he used kinesiology, which is muscle testing. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it's um, a form of measuring energy that um, a lot of like doctors, chiropractors, energy practitioners use. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Hawkins um, used that to facilitate the answering of questions so that he could actually get to the truth of things. Like, why are we here? What's up with us? And how do we get ourselves happy? Because, mm -hmm. you know, literally, if you look around, like, you know, you watch people drive on the road, like, how many happy people are there? Especially on the road <laughs> during traffic hours in Los Angeles. I venture to guess very few. And one of the most fascinating things that I found on the scale of 0 to 1,000, the average human being on the planet, is only at the level of 207. Is that like 207? Yeah. So, on a scale of 1 to 1,000? Yeah. So and where is that? That's at courage. So underneath that um, is grief at 75, fear is 100, anger is 150. Anger is over um, fear because at least anger can sometimes catapult you out. Mm. You know, it's like a moving energy. Mm. So where fear might uh, uh, paralyze you, anger sometimes spurs you to do something. Yeah, so I kind of notice sometimes, like, you know, in my own life, if I'm getting a little irritated or angry, I kind of, like, look at the energy a little bit and go, hmm, what am I trying to, like, push myself through? Mm. And also I found that anger at some times, at some level, for people who are really sensitive and intuitive, 
it could be a, an awareness that you're not willing to receive that your soul wants you to like pay attention to you. Mm-hmm. So it'll keep jabbing you till you like get the message. <laughs> so don't get sad. Get mad. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, mad's better than apathy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, but we don't want people know, to stay there. No. So, so where do we? Where would we rather have them? Yeah. So mad is a moving energy. Okay. <laughs> if you stay stuck there, uh, mad backwards is damn. Right. Ah. So one Aren't of the, we clever today? <laughs> so one of the one of the clues that when I'm looking at somebody's energy system is I look at what all the things that they're mad at because I know if I can shift all of that, mm. they will definitely raise on their, the scale of human consciousness. Wow. Yeah. So it's uh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so where is love on this scale? So love is uh, at the frequency of 500. And um, the reason I chose like love or above mm-hmm. is because... Uh, For instance, the energy of 540 is joy, Okay. and joy is actually the frequency through which healing occurs. So if you want to, like, heal something in your life, no matter, or shift it, get to 540 and above. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. So you almost got to love it first. Yeah, and love, uh, one person at the vibration of love at 500 can shift 750,000 other people who are operating below 200. Wow. Yeah. So we can literally change the world. Um, Like people think self-love is selfish. No, no, no. (laughs) Self-love, like really literally caring about yourself and shifting your consciousness to a higher vibration can actually change the planet. Okay, so let's let's talk about love. What, what kind of love is that? Like when somebody says, oh, I'm in love with so-and-so, is that the kind of love we're talking about? Or I love this cake, or I love my job? <laughs> um, well, love, gratitude, and thanks are usually are the, the higher vibrations. Um, gratitude, I actually calibrated, is at the level of like over 900. Okay, so if we can actually be completely completely grateful for something it like throws you up it just throws you up the the scale wow (laughs) and it's not an emotion gratitude is actually an energy in a space that we're being so it's a it's a it's a beingness that we've really embodied so it's not really hmm because somebody could say oh thank you and not really be grateful but they're going through the motions right and that's not going to cut it no, because you, you, if you, the whole thing is, is this is not like a, um, you, you know, they say fake it till you make it, <laughs> uh-huh. but you, it's not really true. <laughs> you have to intend it, choose it, and embody it. Because if you don't actually embody it, the fake it till you make it isn't going to work. They even shoot, um, um, they even showed that with the in this book, The Secret Life of Plants. He pretended that he was going to... So, for those of you who don't know, there's a book called The Secret Life of Plants where he, he hooked electrodes up to the plant leaves. Mm-hmm. And um, he found that the plant was alive and had a consciousness that it could communicate. And then when he was going to snip it with the scissors, it read on, like, the, you know, the register that, ooh, you know, threat to the to this plant mm-hmm. system. But when he pretended to actually go cut the leaf, uh, it didn't register. But when he actually did... Really? Yeah. Because the plant knew that he wasn't really going to do it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Now, when you say he, you're talking about Dr. Hawkins. Uh, no, no, no. The Secret Life of Plant is by a different author, so I don't remember the name okay. of the author, the, the he. <laughs> okay. But that he uh, yeah, found yeah. this out. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so what I found is the way to actually increase your consciousness is you have to delete your program. So you have to go into all the programming where you hold all the fear, anger, shame, and then at some level, energetically, you have to delete it. And if you don't delete it, then you, then it's it's still, still there. it's still there. Okay, so we can't. You're saying we can't just get to love. We have to go back and clean up some of our mess, or well, if your frequency is such that you can really, really get to a place of love Mm -hmm. or think of an event or think of a baby or think of your Mm pets and really like for that second or those 10 seconds, like really hold the energy of how much you really love versus just mouthing words. That's, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I think some people say, oh, I've done the secret, I've done the law of attraction, I've done all that stuff, and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason, you can't read a book and intellectualize it. <laughs> you know, I wish we all could, right? <laughs> but you actually have to... I wish we could just hold it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and we probably could, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean we embody it. Yeah, you can hold a book. I've done that, actually. I'm yeah. sure you have. Right? Yes. Yeah, and you take in the energy. But if you're willing to take in the energy and embody it fully, right? Yeah, and push all the other stuff out of the way, right? <laughs> then yeah, you can do that. Hmm. Push it all up and out. Yeah, like delete it. You have to delete it. Yeah. So you're it's saying that level. there are different ways of deleting it, and and certainly if you fill yourself with love, then there's really no room for that other stuff. Right. Exactly. Um, but if you can't stay there, then there's something sabotaging it, right? Yeah. So, like, um, so I had a client, uh, Joanne, okay? So we were working on her love thing, and she's in her 50s, and she couldn't get love. And I kept saying, it's on the Internet. You have to go on the Internet. <laughs> yeah. And she didn't want to do it. You know. She you mean love is on the Internet? Yeah, love is on the Internet for <laughs> <Wow>. her. <laughs> okay. And uh, what happened is, so what happened is um, she avoided it for a while, and then finally she went back on. But what happened is she changed her frequency. So in between then and there, she, we deleted a whole bunch of her love programs. Because there's actually a program that runs on the planet that's called the Love-Hate Program. And that's uh, when we're doing polarity. So you love somebody, and then you bring in the whole opposite polarity, mm -hmm. right? And it just slams together. That's why people can think, oh, I found the love of my life. And they're there for like three months with that person, and they right. want to kill each other. <laughs> right. And don't we do that to celebrities? Like, oh, we love this celebrity, and then we love to hate them. Yeah. Yeah. But what people don't get is, like, these programs are interesting because there's actually programs that are on the planet as a collective consciousness that we can, um, if we bought into at some level, it can be... We can access it and download it, I guess, and use it. Yeah. But who wants it anymore? <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she got, Joanne got on the internet, and what happened to her? Uh, so what happened is, after she finally deleted her love uh, things, what happened is, a guy that she saw six months earlier, they finally actually connected. So she'd seen him six months earlier, she deletes her program, they connect, oh. and now they're engaged. You know, that's interesting. So many people say that all the answers are right here, or all you have to do is step into what you want because it's there all along. You're just not seeing it, or you're not aligning with it, or you've got blockages, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about these blockages, because if it's all here, well, and we certainly want it, let's ha what are the biggest blockages to that next level? Well... There's okay, so this is where it comes into the programs that I found. Okay. Okay. Because first off, a lot of people have programs that they don't want to change. Uh huh. Okay. So like one of the first things I do with clients is help them figure out if they're willing to change. Because I, I literally ask in my head, okay, on a scale of one to ten, how willing are they to change? That's interesting because like the lady I was talking about uh, at the beginning of the show, if maybe somebody stopped her and said, you know, do you realize you you know you're complaining a lot and you really don't have to because it's really not that big a deal. You know, she might say, but I want things my way, or there's no reason why I shouldn't get what I want. So she might not see how she's losing out in parts of life because she's stuck in this area. So she might not want to change. Yeah, but also she, she doesn't get, it feels like, she actually, I don't think her belief is that she wants her life her way. I actually believe that her belief is she doesn't think she can actually get her life her way. Ooh. Because one of the most common blocks that I clear from people is uh, the belief that they can't get their life their way. Wow. It's like one of the, one of the main blocks. So change, can't get their... So you actually gave me the interesting segue, because that is one of the main blocks. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're making great team. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, but people don't energetically, I mean, energetically believe that they can get their life their way. And so... That's powerful. Yeah, yeah. So those are like... so. And that's like that's really why working at ten thousand people and asking really good questions because mm -hmm. I was just tired of seeing people like flounder and like what can we do to get to the root of these? Like, yeah, because I think people are good and they just they at some level if they knew how to embody the energy really really they would do it. I really believe that. Okay, so that's one of the big blockages or ways that people sabotage themselves. Um, what is it we were talking about? Two versions of ourselves. 
What was that about? Because it was important. Um, yeah, well, I talk about how, um, like, in order to, like, break it down for people to really, you know, under, understand this concept, like, how does it apply to my life? Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. <laughs> Basically. So there's five main areas of people's life, like their love life, their wealth life, their career life, other relationships, um, and health. Right. Okay. And if you have a love life and other relationships, isn't that conflict well, of interest? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless it's all agreed upon. <laughs> Prior. No. Okay. So, so you're like, talking about family and family, friends. Family, coworkers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, I have had clients who that's like their lifestyle. That that. But they have. But the cool thing is, they have an agreement. Mm-hmm. Do you you know what I mean? So the energy right. is totally clean. <laughs> right. 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 Okay. And and okay. and being clean is important. So now these two parts of self. Yeah. Okay. So there's a. Uh, I call it the lower self. That's when you're operating from love and below, <laughs> which is fear, guilt, shame. Um, you know, anger, fear, all that kind of stuff. And then the higher version of yourself where you're operating from love, joy, gratitude, enlightenment. But you've really embodied it. And the way to start embodying it is to actually really consciously be aware of what your choice is. Like, what are you choosing in each moment? Are you going to choose to operate from the lower self or are you going to choose to operate from the higher self? Mm. So if you have a love life, like, for instance, if your general vibe is you're operating from the lower self, um, like you could be in the kind of love relationship. I know this chick, she pulled in her soulmate, right? But it turned out he was uh, a cheater, which was her greatest fear. Oh. Okay. Now, I always believe that when your greatest fear shows up, it's actually a gift. <laughs> because okay. it's your soul loving you so much to show you, hey, you've got to delete this. Right. Yeah. And if you delete it, then that fear will never show up in your life again. It's like looking in the mirror when I was saying about the mirror. These yeah. people are our mirrors. So uh, he was holding up the mirror to her and saying, this is what you see. Yeah. And so she attracted it. Yeah. And I've seen that a lot. I, I've worked on couples who were like, you know, that, that was like something that showed up in their life. And when we cleared the, uh, like one person, it was her m- mom and dad, her dad, cheated on her mom the whole much of her childhood. When kids are in, um, before the age of seven years old, their brain waves are in theta most of the time. Okay. And so they imprint all that energy, like a, like basically a tape recorder. So she imprinted her mom and dad's reality, men cheat. Then her guy, she attracted a guy, you can either say she attracted a guy who cheated or she attracted a guy uh, who her soul loved her enough to force her to cheat because it was her fear all was being projected upon him. So you could look at it either way. Interesting. But when we cleared her fear, and he didn't know we were working on her, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So she wasn't, you know, talking to him, hey, I'm work- working with this person. We, when we cleared her fear of mom and dad and all that junk, then he quit cheating. You know, that's so interesting. I, I've said something similar when I've said, you know, like I'll act a certain way to somebody and someone says, you know, do you have to keep acting like that? And because I don't want to be wrong, I say, <laughs> when you don't need me to act like that anymore, I won't. <laughs> now, now, the truth might be the other way around. When I don't need to act like that anymore, that person won't provoke that out of me because it won't happen anymore, right? Right. So it's kind of a two-way street. Right. So now, could you have worked on him and she could have cleared um, if, if there's, uh, cause I see things very visually when I'm healing. Okay. So if he would have let me clear all the cords to her and let me heal her through his body and she was willing to accept it, then sure. So I have a lot of, um, uh, wives who actually call me and they're like, can you work on my husband today? And as long as their soul, you know, I'm not doing anything without their soul's permission. Right. right? You're not doing voodoo or anything. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Only love. <laughs> right. Or above. <laughs> yeah. And so as long as, um, you know, that's how you can heal the family. Because my whole thing is, is the, the reason I developed this product is because truthfully, I was really tired of seeing um, people come to me. They're basically just doing their mom and dad's life habitually. Mm. Like uh, this one chick came to me and um, she was, um, could never get, honestly, I felt so bad for her because her life would never work. Like she'd get something good in her life and it would go, the door would slam in two seconds. Wow. And so what happened is when we traced it, it happened to her being one years old. Um, her dad left her mom. Okay. 
And when we cleared her mom's beliefs about the dad leaving her, then basically she could get a guy because she thinks because the belief the the belief was things leave me right that was the overwhelming energy. Mm-hmm. So she finally got to keep a career because <laughs> she would literally get like fired like every six seven eight months. You know, it was like those funny weird thing and she was doing this all herself and she did not realize it yeah so the poor so so some yeah she's just running a program so it's like a back it's like a virus program and that's like i don't think a lot of people understand that some of your programs are really that viral and when they track them back generally speaking the majority of them go to some trauma that you had in your life before 20 or your parents stuff and so I believe that the way to actually really change the world is teach enough family people, enough people, to show other people how not to put that stuff in their kids. Wow. Yeah. So. Sure, the children, so they're not carrying that energy forward. Yeah. So my niece, for instance, she's, um, I have like a bunch of nieces and nephews, but my niece is uh, 13. She gets straight A's. She knows how to clean up her energy on a daily basis. She knows how to, before she goes to school every day, she knows how to manifest her day. Mm. Yeah. And so, and so she even has her friends, like, doing it, you know. So, like, one little Powerful. girl. Yeah, one little girl infusing a whole, like, school with, here's how you do it. And, of course, if she's operating out of love, then maybe 750,000 people out there are able to raise their vibration just a little bit higher. Yeah. Well, actually, that's excellent. I want to remind everybody that you're listening to Life Changes with Filippo and that our guest today is Christy Marie Sheldon. Now, we haven't mentioned her website yet. We're going to talk about an offer that she has uh, a little bit later in the show. But the website is ChristySheldon.com, and Christy is C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E, and then Sheldon, S-H-E-L-D-O-N, ChristySheldon.com. Uh, you can learn more about us and about Christy, actually, if you go to our website at lifechanges.ws. And there you will also get to hear this interview again, if you'd like to, or you can send it to your friends and share it with them. Of course, you can always find us at Life Changes with Filippo on Facebook. And there also we post all the information about our current shows and our future shows. And you can also see the archives there and share that with your friends as well, because as Christy is saying, this information is so important. As we raise our vibrations, as we get closer to love or above, as Christy says, then that can help other people tap in or tune in. Um, hopefully she'll describe to us exactly how that happens in just a minute. Um, or maybe nobody really knows, but it, it works. But regardless, um, let's, let's think about that and help, help share this wonderful message that Christy is presenting us. So as we get back to Christy... Um, let, let's, is, is there any, whether it's science or whether it's uh, philosophy, any idea how, how this works? I mean, if, if you and I sit here and we raise our vibration above love or love and above, um, how do other people tap into that or tune into that to the tune of 750,000 being able to raise themselves above 200? Well, there's, that's a good question. There's been, um, like, uh, Dr. William Broad, uh, B-R-A-U-D, he did some um, science experiments, so there's real science. <laughs> right, I like that. I mean, I believe yeah, it almost yeah, anyways, depends, yeah. but when there's science... Yeah, so he showed that um, with intent, uh, an individual could affect cells, okay, in a body. So, okay. he, so he proved this. And um, my theory is, if you can affect cells, and I mean, I've, I mean, I, I wish everyone could sort of have seen the things that I've seen in my life. I mean, I've seen people's illnesses go away and all sorts of really cool miracles, huh? And yeah, magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, if you have like a Rolodex of that, you kind of <laughs> yeah, you kind of know <laughs> it works. And I will say to people, you know, if you don't understand, see, the energy of a skeptic is, um, I think it's like under two hundred. So it's very, very interesting. If you hold the energy of skeptic, you actually don't allow yourself to uh, raise to love or above. So I say to people, don't be a skeptic. At least just ask the universe, if this is true, show me. (laughs) Ah. Be open to it. But what I've noticed is that um, some of the higher vibes, because I have a lot of, I've taught a lot of clients and I have a lot of friends who are higher vibration. And what I've noticed, and I've heard, you know, stories about this, 
is that when people are around their energy field, they always comment, I feel peaceful, I feel like myself around you. I've had people walk into my energy field not know what I do for a living, and they say, wow, I'm like really clear and they start knowing like this one uh, facilitator wow. said I'm like really psychic being around you <laughs> so it's you know so the higher vibrations give clarity awareness um, easier manifestation I had another person who was in my energy field for instance and um, she hadn't been able to find her passport you know and I said well let's just ask it to show up and then very next day she hadn't been able to find it for two months it was in her side pocket of her duffel bag. And she goes, seriously, I mean, I've, like, used that bag to travel with. It was not there. And she goes, and then this random pair of earrings that I, that I didn't lose on the same trip was also in there. Oh, really? That she had lost. Wow. <laughs> So it's, you know, so when you Whoa. get to the, I know. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> so I don't know if that scientifically answers your question, except for uh, Dr. Broad. But what I think is, is what I've noticed is the higher your vibration, the more we're infinite beings who are in a body. And so I think what we do is we actually expand our consciousness enough to include everybody. Because, you know, the higher consciousness is really about oneness and unity. And it's not you against me. It's really about us. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we do is we tap into the us energy and uh, permeate it. Because how, do, how does the, um, you know, we have all these programs that we buy into on the planet, right, that just gets infiltrated. So why couldn't it be the other way? You know, that's interesting you should say that. I... I I was thinking just the other day, ants communicate somehow. I know they're not talking. I know they're not sitting there going, you know, hey, maybe we should go left, maybe we should go right or whatever. Or like birds when they're flying in formation, they're not saying, hey, should we go left this time, should we go right? And, and if, if you watch them when there are a group of them, what are they, a herd of birds? What are they called? <laughs> I think a flock. A <laughs> flock? <they, laughs> I knew it wasn't a herd, but I couldn't remember a flock. Thank you. Uh, the flocking birds. Um, so all of a sudden, they turn like an airplane. I mean, it's like the whole flock just flocking turns. Yeah. And it all goes in one direction. So it's not like, you know, someone in front's like, ah, da, 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 now we're going to go right now. They just know, right? right, right. So they're tapping into something. And how come we don't do that? And, and we can. Well, I think there's a, I don't know the exact science in this, but there's a whole science field of, um, that talks about the word entrainment, how that we can actually use our consciousness to entrain things or bless things or, and, you know, even Dr. Emoto, right? right. He, he took the photos of the, the crystals and, you know, the fear, anger. Of the water that was frozen, yeah. yeah. Crystals, yes. Yeah. yeah, so. Um, the fear yeah. and anger. We're, we're like blobby, ugly things, right. right? And then joy, love, gratitude, thanks. We're beautiful things. crystals. Yeah. Right. Okay, so here we are. It's, I think, whether it's easy or not, at least we can understand, I think, for the most part, the concept of if someone doesn't make us feel good, instead of just not feeling good, we can get angry and raise our vibration. But how do we go to the next level and the next level and then to love and then take it higher and higher? What, what are there tools? What is the easiest way? Yeah. Besides standing next to somebody who's there already, <laughs> which well, is a good idea. <laughs> well, you know, what I did was because, you know, I was at points in time in my life where I'm like, okay, look, if there's really this whole consciousness thing and I can raise my vibration, you know, this is actually what I thought about after I read his book. I thought, holy crap, there's a chart. Okay, how do I raise my vibe, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> And then what happened is I asked, um, you know, my guides and spirit to lead me and sh just show me what that looked like. One of the first things they, that I was guided to do, interesting enough, was uh, to not judge anything. Mm. Okay? Because if you... Uh, look That's it, I give up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> well, judgment... Now, watch. Here's how weird it is. Okay. So, let's just say you say you have sex and you say, that was the best sex I ever had. Okay? Okay. You just basically said that's the best sex you are ever going to have, and you are not going to have anything better. If you, like, really meant it energetically. Well, what if you meant, like, up until then? <laughs> so I don't say that's the best sex I ever had. My version of life would be, like, how do we have better and better sex every day? Okay. <laughs> or whatever, you know. <laughs> so, but, yeah. but don't judge it as bad, first of all, right? If it was bad. Yeah. And just, well, right. So... 
So I don't go through life looking at it as good or bad or right or wrong. I kind of actually go through life with this, oh, that's really interesting. You know, so everything's just kind of interesting, and it's like a circus, and wow, what do we get to play with today? How mm. cool is that, you know? So, so, so if that's something my, shows up ugly, it's like, oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, it's like, that's it. interesting. And then I can say, well, how do I change it? So I'm living from the place of uh, I'm never a victim, never a martyr, and how do I change it? Okay. <laughs> or how do I change myself, you know? Yeah. Uh, but you're not changing yourself for the better because... Is that judging? Well, I'm changing it. You could say, I guess, uh, it gets a little, I could say I'm changing it to the higher, higher. Con- consciousness or the higher vibration. Okay. I mean, I guess it's sort of a judgment, in, in fact. But what I'm saying is don't judge it so that you've labeled it. Because when I'm clearing people's programs, okay, the way we buy a program is we agree with it, align with it, accept it, and ingest it. You know, so we're, like, taking it in, we've agreed with it, okay, there's this thing, uh, like, we watch movies and we go, okay, we do love-hate on this planet, all right, cool, I am going to do so much drama with this boyfriend that I have, you know, or whatever, right? It actually could be fun, I guess, for some people. (laughs) But what you just did is, you're probably judging him for, you know, from a needy place, or you think he's supposed to do things for you, or true love is, like, you know... Um, they're like half, your other half, Mm -hmm. you know, like how do you split yourself in half? Oh, that's one of my pet peeves. (laughs) Don't go, I agree. I agree. Yeah, so it's sort of like, you know, if you're judging, or you're picking on everything he's doing, you're judging him, you're hating him, and you're putting all that weird lower energy there, you know? You know, it's interesting, I, I say there's no magic in two halves coming together and making a whole. When you take two half apples and you put them together, that's a whole, okay, sort of. They're different <laughs> apples. and whatever. But you take two apples and you bring them together and somehow, alchemically, that becomes a whole. That's magic. Yeah. So two whole beings coming together. Not my other half or my better half. I mean, people, what are we thinking about? I know. Just, like, cut off your leg, cut off your arm, and, like, you know, And now you I'm go. looking for my other half. <laughs> right. Well, if you just cut it off, bring it back. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm looking at this, this beautiful set here that you've got called Christy Marie Sheldon Love or Above. And, of course, this is your toolkit. And I've got, like, this looks like a CDs. You've got some interviews in there. And a whole like CD series. So what's going on? What is this toolkit about? Well, I, well, I walk people. So one of the things that happened is, and I've actually gotten a lot of thank yous from people who have actually read Hawkins' books, and they say thank you for putting a toolkit together because I was reading the book, but I didn't get what to do. Yeah, it's so scientific. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. They're like, I don't know what to do with this. And so I basically broke it down to the basic steps, and I talk about um, certain kind of. I don't like to call it rules, but, you know, just certain ways that you can live that will actually raise your consciousness. Okay. Uh, I teach people how to delete programs. I had um, one of the, this amazing story. Uh, this lady did, I do a cord cutting, uh, cord cutting and deletion of programs CD. And she wanted to get back all of her power, okay. you know, because she was like this matriarch that had held every the whole family together, right? Okay. So, like, cord cutting, you're talking about her energy is on her children or on this, or it's all this Everyone's, scattered. like, basically plugging into her, trying yeah. to make her be the power source instead of the God being the power source. Okay. You know? Yeah. So, instead of hooking, because instead of hooking up to the light for yourself, mm-hmm. um, um, you know, a lot of people will actually just plug into other people for the light. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. that's, <laughs> that shortcut is not good for anybody. No, kind of bad matters. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> but I go through, like, uh, you know, how to teach people how to get all their power back, you know, um, get rid of, like, the negative people in your life. You know, how many times have we walked into a room and after somebody had a fight, we can feel all that stuff. Yes, it's true. But, like, all that energy is hanging out. So how do you clear that? How do you know if the, the thought or belief that you're having in your head is yours or maybe you're intuitive and you're picking up somebody else's? Yeah. So I teach them that. And so I basically... Um, put a whole like series of that and then I did a cool compilation CD that has like all the meditations that were in the program on one CD so if they just don't have time to listen to everything they can before they go go to bed they can do 20 minutes they can clean out their whole energy field and so I've had people I had this one chick she said she won the lottery she said if this raise the vibe thing really really works I want to know it 
And so she went and played the lottery. Oh, she literally won the lottery. Yeah, oh, she literally true. won the lottery. And she did it. She won. Uh, she never never won more than one number, and she won uh, four numbers, and she did it three times. Okay, so she was aligning with that. And yeah, she goes, if this really works, and I cleaned out all my money consciousness, then I want to know that something shifted. <laughs> and she got an answer. And I see that you have a workbook that goes along with it as well. And is this what's available at uh, christysheldon.com? Yeah, so for the first um, three people that are listening, if you go to my website, there's a little box at the bottom that um, it says free download. Just type in your name and, um, you know, your name and your email. And the first three people who go there, I'll give away a free kit. It's um, a really good value. Wow, that's really (laughs) nice. Thank you. Yeah, and and, uh, and then if you want to purchase the kit, just go to the bookstore and you can read more about it. Excellent. And, of course, you could listen to this show again and and get information that I'm sure, I mean, there's just, you speak so quickly. I I love this. We got so much in. Um, Is is there anything, actually, that we left out? I can't imagine that there is, but but is there there anything that you wanted to make sure that we talked about today? Um, No, just, no, really, just, I mean, the very basic thing for me is, the whole thing is, is, People always wonder what's one thing they can do for themselves every day to, like, really help the planet. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what can you really do to help people? Well, raise your vibe. Even if you just raise your vibe for that day. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're you're literally changing the planet. So one person can make a difference. Hugely. I mean, it's a cliche, but you're you're saying that's scientifically proven and all that, that... So, so people say, oh, the world is terrible and this is happening in the news and all that stuff. First of all, shut out the TV. <laughs> well, don't entrain yourself because the news, uh, the news calibrates usually between maybe 200. Oh, that's interesting. Well, well wait, 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 before you go, let's talk about that. So well, let's talk about things that, like... Well, what's really interesting is, like, for instance, the African nations that, you know, we wonder why there's poverty over there. Well, they're conscious. They're, I'm, not, I'm not trying to blame the... You know, this kind of can sound a little weird, but the consciousness over there in some of the countries is only like 30. Hmm. Okay, so how do we change that planet? We help get them out of the energy of guilt, shame in some way and empower them. Hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise we're just feeding the program, the problem. We're not like helping empower them. So you were saying that the news calculates at around 20 or 200? What was uh, it? Yeah, I think it's, it depends which news station. Uh-huh. You, can, you can calibrate each newspaper in each news station. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. What about foods? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I usually do for my foods. And I always bless my foods and mm-hmm. infuse it with a higher gratitude, love energy before I eat it so right. that it's congruent for my body. I do that when I'm cooking, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I really do, you know, those salt shakers you see that say put love in it, you know what I mean? It's oh, like, that's like yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. No, I don't do that, but <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I calibrate, I always ask, and I also teach intuition in my course, so people can learn how to muscle test. In the toolkit? Uh-huh. Okay. They can learn how to muscle test, and they can learn how to um, use their intuition to ask what food would actually feed and nourish my body. Oh, because okay. there's food that is low vibration and there's food that's obviously high vibration. Yeah, and your body needs different things at different times, you mm. know, is what I found. So. Well, you have certainly shared a lot of what you have found with us, and we are <laughs> certainly happy that we found you. So, again, the website is christysheldon.com, and Christy is C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E, and then Sheldon, S-H-E-L-D-O-N.com. And uh, Christy uh, Marie Sheldon is going to be giving out three of these toolkits if you go to her website and put your name and address in, um, the first three people that do that. Well, Christy, what could I say except thank you so much for having been on our show and sharing all this great information, and I can't wait for us to connect again. Yeah, thank you. It's been (laughs) a pleasure. We'll have to spend another weekend together. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Well, that's Christy Marie Sheldon on our show today, and uh, we're so happy that she shared all that wonderful love, energy, and above. So now uh, we learned a little bit of how we raise our energy. Let's talk about how to be the change we wish to see in the world. With, and with that, for that segment, we have our very own Dorothy Lee Donahue. Hi. What a great show. Christy's the best. Um, I'm just going to talk to you tonight about 
false prophets. This is the time of revelations. This is the end of times as we know it. This weekend, I spent some time at the New World Fair in Pasadena, and there were several booths presenting information from some people who are spoken about, and you could almost say they were the second coming of the Christ. I also received last week and the week before some emails that are going around the Internet that are talking about the second coming of the Christ and saying that he is soon to appear. And what I'm here to tell you tonight is that it's not going to happen. The second coming of the Christ is the awakening of the Christ consciousness within each of us. This is what Christy was talking about tonight. This is what we have come to do, is to take our power back, to connect with the source, and to bring it down through us and out through our hearts. And once we do this, then we truly are the power in our world. So there's so many beautiful people out there teaching things, like Christy, Life Changes, uh, Dr. Doug from last week, and all of our guests on Life Changes. You can check out our archive shows. And we're constantly talking about the things and the tools that will help you become the change you want to be. You're the person that has control of your life. And you control it by your thoughts and your beliefs and your thoughts. It was really interesting because I have been thinking that I was pretty clear with my thoughts. And one of the things that I have believed since I was 14 or 15 was when my doctor told me that I had a caveman metabolism and that I would never be able to easily release weight. Now, I have changed my thought about that But I realized just recently that I still hold that belief. So I have to go in and change my belief, not just my thoughts, but my belief. And so I've been working on that, and I'm proud to say that since I changed my belief, I have released, not lost, I never want to lose anything because you can always find it, but I have lost 20 pounds. Released. And released, thank you. Uh, released. Because in the past, every pound that I lost, I found and usually two more to go with it. So it's really great to know that we have the power. And this is a time for clearing up all of our stuff. Don't give it to some guru or to think that the second coming means someone is going to come down here from the sky or come up here from the east and tell us how we can know uh, who to follow and what to say and what to do. All of the wisdom and all of the answers lie within you. So that's why I end each of our talks each week with the fact that you are the power in your world. Don't let any hugging saint or anyone tell you, even if they're channeling the star brothers and sisters and they say that they're from the great confederation of the light, that the Christ is arriving tomorrow on a spaceship, it's not going to happen. Wake up, please. This is a time for us all to be awake and aware and to remember that we are the power in our world. So I hope that you will listen to tonight's show again and check out our guest. And remember that you are always the power in your world. You've always been. You are the guru that you've been waiting and looking for. You are the only one who can end your suffering. And you can only do this by beginning a love affair with yourself. Examine your thoughts and your beliefs, please and then change them to serve you. 
choose to become a very conscious co-creator by making the most elegant choices possible and never forget that you are powerful beyond measure and that you are loved. You are lovable and you are loved. Thank you, Dorothy, with that message of how to be the change we wish to see in the world. And speaking of how to be the change, we um, want to find, we want to change that name <laughs> to something shorter or something uh, a little bit more powerful. Uh, it's actually very powerful. What could be more powerful than, than, than how to be the change we wish to see in the world? But in any event, um, actually, you know what? We've been receiving s- so many suggestions. People um, have been offering, uh, hey, have this person on the show or um, talk about this and all that stuff. So if you, you have a title for us that we could use uh, for that segment, uh, by all means, we'd uh, love to hear from you. And actually, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we have a treat tonight because we always um, get to hear Mark's uh, voice at the beginning and end of the show, but uh, today he's actually here with us, and that doesn't happen very often, and I uh, just wanted to know if you want to say hi to anybody in particular. Uh, y- yeah, hi to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty particular. You don't want to say, like, hi, Mom. Hi, right Mom. <laughs> Love you, Mom. Um, we get, uh, a- at every live event, it's interesting, because I, 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 I talk throughout the whole show, and then at the end... Mark does this visualization, and everybody's like, "Oh my God, that Mark, that voice!" and and I I I just I'm happy to hear that actually because I agree that that our voices bring out so much vibration, like a lot like what Christy was saying, and um, a lot comes through our voices. And Mark certainly has a lot of resonance in his voice and a lot of love that comes through. So people really feel it during his. Uh, visualizations and meditations during our live event and who knows maybe someday it might be fun to do one on the air maybe we'll do that yeah maybe we'll do that um but in any event so uh did you did you get a chance to i I know you were listening at the at the top of the show to what i was saying about people's patterns and you're one of these people that has actually stopped me and made me look at some of my patterns um you know as a friend and as a coworker, is that a is that a hard thing to do? I mean, I know I do it with you, and sometimes I feel like you know maybe I'm intruding. But how does you know how does that feel to be on the other side of that? In terms of working with someone else, someone else's patterns, right, or or, or your own, right. because I think both perspectives take a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to be able to stand up and 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 work with someone and and acknowledge your your aspect or your being a mirror in their life, I think, as much as it does you looking in the mirror and, and, and recognizing things that you might not want to recognize in yourself. You know, that's interesting you should say that, of course, because some people uh, don't want to lose a friendship or they're afraid they might say the wrong thing or they might not know if, if what they have to say is right or wrong. But sometimes we, at least in my case, I feel like in my heart, I feel like I need to say this to you, like obviously nobody else has or Maybe you haven't heard anybody else, and for some reason it feels important for me to say it. How does it happen from your end when you actually put your neck out and say something? I think it's, it, it, that's a good way of saying it because you have to be moved, and I think you have to be connected. You have to, to be coming from such a place that you really want that healing for that person and, and, and for yourself. And uh, in order to really be, be able to bring that forward and, and to go to that place of truth. Um, so it's really about transparency, and, and from that transparency, then healing emerges. You know, thank you, Mark. I'm, I'm glad we had a few minutes here at the end of the show, and, and that we talked about that because it's it's actually helping me. I have a friend who I have I have done that for, and who he um, he's actually been very receiving of it, and and it's I've been doing it with joy, and now all of a sudden I, I don't find joy in it anymore, and and. And and maybe that's telling me it's it's time to move on, and maybe that friend needs a different teacher or something. So that's really helpful. Well, I, I think if if it's attached to joy uh, or or the lack thereof, then then maybe what you're wanting for them is is not necessarily what they need at that moment, right? Because mm-hmm. if you're not getting that back, then you maybe. You know, in, in situations like that, I like to start looking at myself, saying, "All right, what am I trying to get out of this?" Ah. Because there's a different uh, attachment to an outcome. 
Ah, interesting. Well, we could certainly spend a whole show on just that, and maybe someday we will. And actually, uh, Mark, I've interviewed you before, but we've never had an interview uh, experience together on on this show. So who knows? Maybe that might happen at some point. Certainly people do like your voice. But in any event, don't worry, I get my fair share too. So uh, I'd like to thank Christy Marie Sheldon for having been on the show today. And and want to remind you that you can go to our website and you can go to Facebook or connect with us on Twitter or YouTube, that we love hearing from you and we'd like to uh, continue a relationship throughout the week, not just once a week on the air. Today's show has been made possible in part by our sponsors, Ionways Water Systems, Change Your Water, Change Your Life, and Love and Miracles. And to learn more about them, visit our sponsor page on our website and click on their links. I am Filippo Voltaggio, and it has been my pleasure being of service by hosting Life Changes with Filippo today. I, along with our segment hosts and producers, Dorothy Lee Donahue and Mark M. Lejour, and our engineer, Seth, thank you for joining us and being part of the show and being part of the change we all wish to see in the world. Ciao, everyone. You have been listening to Life Changes with our master of change, Filippo Voltaggio. Join us here every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and visit us on the web at lifechanges.ws. Also, you can follow our community on Facebook at Life Changes. Join us here next week as we consciously embrace and explore the only constant, Life Changes.